Today in the studio, we're making green screen commercials. Daniel Schiffer, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Quarantine cut. I did it myself. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Today we're talking green screen commercials. Now I'm not gonna beat around the bush at all. This is pretty much a direct copy of Daniel Sheffer's video. I know he has the final cut workflow. Today we're gonna focus on the Premiere Pro workflow. I wanted to copy his workflow because it seemed like a nice jumping off point for having a green screen. His workflow and the end result seemed like something I could achieve. As I was going through his tutorial, there was a few things that I wanted to point out, show some subtle differences, but our end result is pretty much identical. So again, thanks Daniel Sheffer for putting out that awesome tutorial. If it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be doing this video at all. So come in a little closer so you can see a few of the key elements that I use for this product video. Went to the store and found a really bright, vibrant label that would pop against the background. So next we have this dynamic perception pan tilt head and I only have one of the axes just to get a simple rotation. This is where the product is going to sit. Now in Daniel's video, he went and made a green screen little holder for it to be able to mask this out. And again, he uses Final Cut Pro. And today in Adobe Premiere Pro, you'll see how this doesn't make as much of a difference to have your prop or stand be green for green screen. Don't get discouraged if you don't have a motorized head. I've seen people get super creative and use something as simple as a cup on the top of a table to do the same effect. For lighting, I'm using a nice diffused softbox to hit the green screen, makes for a nice key. Then for the product, I'm using a much larger light dome and I'm using these two Aperture MC lights, one to fill in the shadows and one to give a nice orange kick on the side. You'll see how that comes into play later. If you're looking at this stuff and really wondering what exactly all this is, it's basically the control unit sitting on top of a giant battery, sitting on the motor, on the motor control arm, on a tripod head, sitting on a miniature tabletop tripod. This is way overkill. The dynamic perception rig is mainly for time lapses. Today I've just modified it to be able to use it for a tabletop rotation. You can really use any any camera, even your iPhone, but today I've got the red Komodo on the sticks. And something that Daniel Sheffer didn't talk about was the lens and focal length. For green screen, I've tried a few different lenses, including the 16 to 35 Canon 2.8 but today I'll be using the Canon 50 millimeter 1.2. When you have a sharp tech sharp image, helps keying out the background that much easier. Now I really wanna point out the lighting because having a good light on your green screen will help tremendously with keying out the green later on the computer in post. Now once you've got your green screen properly lit, and everything's nice and even, I like to focus on the key light, which in my case is a double diffused giant softbox. That's about a 45 degree angle from the lens, giving some nice highlights on this side and some nice shadows on this side. Now Daniel in his video goes the extra mile to use green tape to mask out this little pedestal. That's so he can use a keying tool in Final Cut Pro to easily mask this out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's such feature in Premiere Pro. So even though I wrapped this in green tape, it was kind of an extra step that I didn't need to do. We have the big key light taking care of most of the lighting, but we are left with a little shadow underneath the juice. So if we turn on the little Aperture MC light, that really helps to get rid of the shadow that forms right underneath the bottle. These little Aperture MC lights are awesome. You can adjust the hue to pretty much any color. So I'm gonna find a color that matches the color of the bottle and it'll give it a nice kick on the edge. It's the details that really make your product shot stand out from others. This rip off video wouldn't be complete unless I hit it with a little water to miss the side of it. Now I'm gonna turn on my dynamic perception rotating head and fire up the app. And when I hit record on my camera, I'm going to rotate the product until it makes a full 360. Right, so once you confirmed you have all of your shots, everything's in focus and exposed properly, you can take our memory card and we'll jump over to the computer for the editing process. Here we are in the editing bay. I did not steal this hat from my girlfriend, but I did buy it with my wife. And let's dive right in. First up, I'm gonna be opening up Adobe Premiere Pro. Now you can do this in pretty much any video editing software. I just so happen to be using Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud. I'm gonna open a new project. We are going to call this Juice Green Screen. Save it to the desktop. 
And this opens a new project. Now I'm gonna go to my media browser and import my footage. Now I was shooting in 6K, but I don't necessarily want to edit in 6K. I'm going to create a 1080p timeline. So to do that in Premiere, I can come down here and click new sequence, 1080p at 24 frames per second. It is important to keep the frames per second consistent with what you filmed in. We will call this sequence, green screen sequence and hit enter. I will drag my footage onto the timeline and keep existing settings. This is asking if I want to change it to 6K to match the footage, but I would like to keep it the 1080p 24 frames per second that I started. Now it's huge inside the frame again because it's 6K, so I want to scale it down immediately. You can also do that by right clicking set to frame size. This clip was recorded with no audio, so I'm going to unlink the audio from the video and just go ahead and delete. Now I've already come in here and enabled rulers underneath the window tab and pulled out some simple vertical and horizontal guidance points and lined them up to the center of the screen horizontally and vertically because step one here is taking our footage and getting it centered in the frame. I wanna start with the bottle with it actually a little bit smaller than it is because eventually we'll scale up in size and have a zoom in effect, but that comes in a little bit later. Now I'm gonna go ahead and isolate the part of the clip that I would like to use. I spun the bottle a few times. Once we have that isolated, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into the footage by hitting the plus and minus button on my keyboard. There's a little bit of wobble on the axis. So using the position and rotation effects in the effects controls, I'm going to center the bottle and rotate it correctly to get its proper orientation. To do that, I'm going to set keyframes at the beginning, halfway through the rotation, at the end of the rotation, then at each keyframe adjusting the rotation first, and then the position. All right, now it looks like at most I only adjusted it one degree of rotation, but again, when you go and play back this clip, it now looks centered and uniform. So instead of having a linear blend, you can go one step further and select all of these keyframes. By holding shift, you can select even more. I will right click, temporal interpolation, and select continuous bezier to make a smooth curve and transition between all of these. Now come down here and realize that my clip is just about 17 seconds. But in reality, I would love a four second clip. So I'm gonna come in here and type in four seconds to get my playhead right at four seconds. Hit the R key on my keyboard and retime this clip to make the whole thing happen in about four seconds. So now at this point, I'm gonna go into the coloring tab to add some of the saturation and contrast back and get the exposure correct to help out with the keying, which comes after. So at the top of Premiere, you can select the coloring tab. And we're gonna start with the basic correction. Make sure you're selected on your clip. And I wanna increase the exposure a little bit, increase the contrast, bump the saturation up to about 110%. We're gonna play with the highlights until we're happy with them. Adjust some of the shadows to make sure we get some deep, nice shadows. Play with the whites. Again, this is all to your taste. All right, and just like that, I'm satisfied with this image. We're gonna go back up to the effects tab here and type in ultra. And you'll see this ultra key. That's what we're gonna apply to this clip to key out the green screen. And I'm just gonna minimize some of these that we're not using for right now so we can focus on the ultra key. Instead of working in the effects tab, I'm gonna go back to editing tab. We're gonna take the eyedropper tool and select the green of the green screen. And just like that, it keys out the green screen. But you can tell we are left with this pedestal. So I am gonna go back and create an opacity mask by selecting this pen tool. And instead of having it fit to screen, I'm gonna zoom way into 200% and zoom down. And we're gonna create a mask around this pedestal to get rid of the pedestal that's in the shot. Instead of taking just the pedestal, I'm gonna click the inverted tab. It's going to get rid of that pedestal and preserve whatever else is outside of the mask. Minimize the opacity. And now going down the ultra key settings, 
we're going to expand the matte generation. Now what you're looking at here is a composite image. I'm gonna go back to fit. And you can see that some of the green wasn't keyed out perfectly. And we have some of these sliders to be able to adjust that. First of which we are going to adjust the transparency, then the highlight. And by sliding these to the maximums, both left and right, you can tell which way you'll probably need to slide them and then find what percentage will work best for your image. A lot of images, depending on color, detail, sharpness, will range in the amount you need to adjust these sliders. And just like that, without a lot of work, we're left with a pretty snazzy image. Now we are gonna take this a little bit further. Matte generation is only the first of four that we're gonna touch. Going into matte cleanup, we can clean up the mask itself. Just by adjusting these left and right, you can kind of tell what'll work best for your image. It's kind of hard to tell when you're all the way zoomed out. So using this tool here to zoom way in and kind of look at some of the finer details will really help you understand what these sliders are doing. I'm going to collapse matte cleanup. Now I'm going to go into spill suppression. Now if you've noticed using a green screen will sometimes reflect or bounce a lot of green light back onto your subject and you can kind of tell right in the edge or rim of this juice that I am getting some green rebound. So by clicking the desaturate it works with the color that you've keyed to desaturate just that color. Now normally you can just reduce this or increase the value to desaturate the green that's there. But interestingly enough, green is right next to yellow on the color spectrum. That's not working the best for me. So I'll show you how we're gonna work around that. And instead of using spill suppression or color correction here inside of the ultra key option, I'm gonna minimize this and actually go up to my coloring tab. I'm gonna center my image here. And instead of doing basic correction, I'm going to go into the curves tab and in the hue versus saturation. Timeout. I know this can be really scary for people, but just follow along. Trust me, it's not that scary. So in the hue versus saturation tab, you can desaturate or saturate specific hues within the spectrum. And to prove my point, you can see how close green and yellow are on the spectrum here. So I have a lot of yellows, oranges, and reds, and whites happening, but I do not want the green of my green screen in the shot. So I'm gonna try and very specifically preserve the yellows and oranges. So I'll click a few points, one, two, and we can take the greens completely out of the shot. But you see how quickly the image falls apart in the green key. So be very careful what you're playing here and make sure that you're only desaturating the greens and not some of the green. Otherwise you'll see it completely blow out like this. So just like that, now I'm left with a less green edge and we go back to editing. We'll go ahead and go back to fit and play our clip. And just like that, with some very simple editing, we're left with a very clean juice product green screen effect. So we've done a good amount of work here. I'm gonna hit save. And since we have some keyframes and some dynamic movement here, what I like to do is create nested clips to keep track of what I'm doing. So this is the juice. And for our next step here, I would really like to spice some things up here by copying and pasting this clip and nudging it right underneath the original. I'm gonna click effects and type in transform. And I'm gonna add a vertical flip to this bottom juice container. And using the motion tab, I'm going to move that down. Then in the opacity, we're going to adjust this to 25%. And just by doing that, you can see a nice reflection of our juice container. Go back to editing, hit save. And just for the sake of organization, I'm gonna go ahead and nest this clip and call it reflection. Now, when you come in and zoom in down here, you can see the juice bottle on the top and the reflection on the bottom. Hit the eyeball here to see exactly what is what. So now that we're nice and organized, I'm gonna go ahead and take this juice clip and duplicate it one more time. So we're left with two. And with the juice bottle that's sandwiched right in the middle, I'm going to go back to our effects tab and type in blur and take this Gaussian blur and add it right to that clip. And we're going to amplify the blurriness to about, I don't know, anywhere between 150 to 200%. 
I'll choose 175. And you can kind of see this glow that's starting to happen here. Now, even though the blur is set to 175%, we're gonna go and take the opacity down to something a little bit more realistic, somewhere between the 50 and 60% range. Why don't we split the difference, call it 55, and here is what we're left with. Looks pretty good so far, right? So now that we have a good looking juice bottle, I'm gonna go ahead and take all of these and nest the clip and call it juice bottle. What this does is essentially takes all three of those layers and smushes it into one layer for organization and clarity. Another convenient thing that this does is that instead of making individual adjustments to each one of those three layers, you can add adjustments to one single layer and it's a global adjustment for all three. For example, if I wanted to add a zoom to these, I can come to the start of this clip, zoom in a little bit, keyframe the scale, then go to the end of the clip, last frame, add another keyframe, and let's zoom to about 120%. And now the power of keyframing has a zoom in from 100 to 120%. At this point, I'm gonna point you towards your favorite stock footage website to download a few different assets. We have a exploding juice looking background. We have a kind of abstract ethereal background, and we have some floating particles. I'll import them right here to my project. First off, we're gonna drag this into our project and snug it right underneath our juice bottle. Cut it down to size to match the clip length. And instead of taking it as is, I'm gonna zoom in to find the piece of this clip that makes it enough abstract that looks about right. Now to match the orange and yellow theme here, I'm gonna pop back into the color tab and color match this so it's a little bit more orange and yellow. And now I'm noticing that this bottle is a bit dull in comparison, so I'm going to come back into the juice bottle and raise the exposure, contrast, maybe some of the whites and highlights to really give it that extra pop. This is where we're going to bring it full circle. Remember that Aperture MC set to orange? If you come in and zoom in to this clip, you'll notice the orange kick really ties in perfectly with this orange background. And it's those subtle details that really brings a nice cohesive look to the entire bottle, the lighting. It's a nice touch that goes a long way. So it's already looking pretty amazing at this point, but to take it yet another level, we're going to bring in some simple particle effects. So to do that, I'm gonna come back here into my media browser drag in the particle effects and bring it in between these two layers so that it's beneath the bottle and above that background that we just created. Again, trimming it down to size. And instead of having these big stars, I'm going to go to my effects panel and scale way up. And we'll set the blend mode under opacity to screen. And now we have some floating particles coming through our shot. And finally, we have that juice animation splash effect that we're going to bring in to really set it off. So I will take the juice bottle, bump it up one more time, and we've got our juice effect here. We'll come into the color tab and make sure that it's the proper saturation, vibrance, contrast color that we're looking for. And now that I'm looking at this, I think it's super important to take a giant step back and look at the original clip that we started with. It's incredible to think what you can do with a green screen, some simple stock footage, and some patience. Hopefully at this point, you've got the creative juices flowing and you're super inspired. Again, disclaimer, I took this completely from Daniel Sheffer. Daniel, thanks again. I super appreciate it. You inspired me and hopefully this inspires others to do the same. If you like what you're seeing here, give it a like. If you want more, hit subscribe. If that's not for you, that's all right too. But until next time, we'll see you. Peace.